At Embrace Orthodontics, we straighten and align teeth, and we do so for children or adults. And we have a variety of options so that they can go through this experience feeling empowered as they go through the whole process. It's a warm, comforting environment that speaks to teenagers and adults, so everyone feels comfortable. There's a cold wind blowing eastward and it's calling me back home. Hi everyone and thanks for watching season three of Places and Spaces. We bring you stories from the most talented architects, brokers, contractors and designers from all over Maine. And if you're wondering what it's like to build, remodel or invest in communities across the state, we hope to inspire you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now let's see where today's episode takes us. Both my grandfathers were carpenters. One was a home builder, one was more of a, an artist doing wood reliefs. And as a kid, I'd always enjoyed uh, working around the house and doing odd jobs as well. And I started working very young around town in Portland and really enjoyed construction and design. And it just grew from there. I'm a Mainer, I'm a mom, and I'm co-owner of Mies Relations, a PR firm in Portland. And when I'm not working, you can find me with my bees, my chickens, my dogs, or my son down on Maggie's farm. Hi, I'm Rob Barrett, owner of Barrett Maid. When I'm not working, I love to spend time with my wife and kids on the lake. I'm Britt Vitalius. I grew up in Maine, sailing up and down the coast with my family and hiking and skiing in the mountains. I moved away after college, but came back 15 years ago to raise my family here and just enjoy everything Maine has to offer. I grew up in a little island on the coast of Maine called Eastport. It's a really tight-knit community, a really beautiful little island, and it really taught me the importance of having a really strong, great relationship that I could carry over into my business now. When I'm not doing real estate, I love to be outside. I love riding my bikes through the back roads all the way to Freeport, or I love strapping on my skis down to Pineland Farms. Hey everybody and welcome to Places and Spaces. Welcome to mud season in Maine. Unfortunately, we just missed the snow. Never know when we're gonna lose it, but we will definitely be back next winter to go snowmobiling. We are so excited to be exploring the Eustis Stratton area this week. And so this area is not too far from Rangeley and it's about 15 minutes from Sugarloaf, but people come here all year long for the incredible fishing, hiking, and all around incredible exploring. And even in mud season, this area is still so beautiful. Beyond the outdoor activities that Maggie just mentioned, there is a tight knit community of artists, builders, and business owners. And today we will meet some of the locals that make Eustis and Stratton an extra special place to visit and live. There's also an incredible history here. Benedict Arnold's 1775 March to Quebec went right through this area. And I'm going to meet with local historian Kenny Wing to learn all about the Arnold Trail. And while you're chatting with Kenny, I am excited to introduce you to a really cool family who's been in the area for generations and they are restoring a home from the 1800s back to its original glory. Right now it's called the Widow's Block, but that name is about to change and we'll tell you why. I'm excited to hear why. <laughs> so after that, why don't we meet back here at the Teapot Sporting Camps and then we can check out what makes this place so great. And I've heard so much about it, so I can't wait to explore. Okay. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> if you remember one name from high school history, it's probably Benedict Arnold. What you might not remember is that he led 1,100 troops through Maine on an ill-fated sneak attack to Quebec. We are now going to speak with local historian Kenny Wing about the section of the Arnold Trail that runs through Eustis. We're in the town of Eustis, but we're on the shore of Flagstaff Lake. Uh, Flagstaff Lake is a man-made lake. It was all a river when Arnold was here, and the river channel is right here. So Arnold's bateau were in fact right here. So we're on the northern end of Flagstaff Lake with Bigelow Mountain in the background, and it's one of the places that Arnold actually was. I got my interest by osmosis from my father. He was the expert. And uh, he grew up in Flagstaff Village. He claims he looked at Bigelow Mountain every day and wondered about Benedict Arnold and delved into it uh, with no benefit from the internet back in the 50s and 60s. Read every book he could find about it and told me everything he learned about it, you know. So you can, when you grow up here, it's natural to think about Arnold. 
You can definitely hike on lots of parts of the trail. You can canoe chain of ponds, which is where Arnold went. There's a lot of sections that you can actually go now with our maps from the society, with information that we publish and so forth. There's a lot of, a lot of good stuff out there for people to actually walk, boat, canoe, swim, where Arnold was. So you mentioned that you and your dad shared a bond over learning about right. Benedict yep. Arnold. Talk about some of the artifacts that you two have found together. Several years ago, the society paid to do a professional archaeological dig on some of these sites. And we found a couple new sites. I was involved in that crew as an archaeologist. And uh, I actually found an ammo box, about 100, it would have been about 100 pounds, containing about 1,500 musket balls. My father found a 25 pound keg that contained 800 musket balls. That's so those are the things you find. Personally, what's the one thing that you want people to take away from this? That, um, for the majority of his military career in the Revolutionary War, he was a hero. He had done some amazing things for, for George Washington. And every time he went and attacked, he, he could see ahead. He, he had this way of leading. And before he was a traitor, he was another whole person for our American Revolution. And we would not have succeeded anywhere near what we did if it hadn't been for him, in my, in my opinion. So Kenny, thank you so much for sharing all this incredible historical information with us. And now we are going to jump from 1775 to 2021 and meet with Casey Cody and Britt Vitalius to see what it's like to live like a local in Eustis. I'm Britt Vitalius from Vitalius Real Estate Group. I've been coming up to Sugarloaf for four years now, well, really since I was a kid, but with my own family for the last four years. But I never traveled past the access road. So today I came up to meet with Casey Cody from The Bean Group to give me a tour of Eustis and all the amazing property and town up here. Let's go in and meet Casey. Hi Casey. Hi Brett, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming to see this beautiful Eustis home. It's definitely an ideal location and very desirable for many people. From a lot of locations up on Eustace Ridge, you get the panoramic view of Flagstaff Lake, uh, the Bigelow Mountain Range, you can see Sugarloaf, and all the way over to Saddleback. To Saddleback, yeah. yeah. And this home, this is gorgeous. Yes, we have a lot of beautiful homes in this area. A lot of people say that about they've never gone past the access road, and I always tell them it's worth the drive. We have a lot to offer up here. It's a wonderful community. Is this a typical main town that in the winter you see more snowmobiles at the gas station than... Absolutely. <laughs> Try to get your gas on Thursday because you're not going to get in on That's Friday right. and Saturday. That's how you know you're... Same with groceries. <laughs> you're amazing. That's great. Yeah. All right, Britt. First, I need to show you this screened-in porch. It's amazing. You wow. have panoramic views of Flagstaff Lake, Bigelow Mountain Range. You can even see Sugarloaf. Wow. And then over there, you even get a view of Saddleback. So it's, to me, a view like no other. This is unbelievable. It I've been really in Maine is. my whole life and I didn't realize there was a ridge like this where you could see Sugarloaf and Saddleback together and the lake and just all yeah. creation. It's, it's really spectacular. It is. I'm glad I got to share it with you. What a gem. So for people considering moving to Eustis, what kind of real estate is available up uh, here? Well, we have a variety. We have the traditional hunting camps, um, some fixer-uppers. We have primary residents. A lot of people want to call this home. Um, and then we have the higher end properties like the one that we're in today that is uh, sort of your ideal Eustis dream home is I think the best way to explain it. I'd love to come back if you'll have me. Absolutely, and, uh, anytime. sit out and enjoy a drink on a nice spring day or the summer and check out the lake and, yeah. and the things that are not winter up here because I, I think there's probably a lot up here. There is a lot and I have a lot of clients that tell me um, once they get over that Bigelow hill after the access road, all their stress goes away. It's and incredible. I just love to hear that, and I just think everyone should make a point to come try it for themselves. I agree. I did it today. And yeah. <laughs> it's some, something transforms when you just go past, past the road. Absolutely. So. Okay. Well, thank you again for having me, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Whether you're looking to sell in the next six months or you're going to be there for a few years, anything that you do to your property is going to impact the value. But have you ever considered having a real estate broker walk through your property? It can give you insight as to who is moving into your neighborhood, who's looking for similar properties, and what kinds of things people are most anxious to have. Whether you're looking to create a new bathroom or kitchen or add a master bedroom to your first floor, 
I would have a conversation always with a real estate agent first. If you're interested in more information about this, you can reach out to any of us at vitalius.com. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Places and Spaces. We are now going to stop into Birds and Flight Gallery and chat with longtime resident and artist Hugh Verrier about what it's like to create in this beautiful community. Here we are in Eustace. Uh, we're at my gallery uh, and our home. My partner is Gene Gutman, and we've been here for, oh, I don't know, 20 years now, and we have this little cutie dog that we got about a year and a half ago. We, he's a honey. So I'm not a birder, but I do love them, and we have a lot here. It just kind of lent, lent, lent themselves to the kind of work I do, which is uh, boiling the, the very heavy paper, bending it, cutting it, forming it. I used to be a sculptor, and this is kind of sculpture in a sense, the uh, paper birds. Right now I have a flock of evening grosbeaks that are here. They'll travel through. I don't know how long they'll be here, but they are fun to watch. Uh, dot hatches, small, hairy, and downy woodpeckers. We don't get the pileated, they're the large ones. But we see them all around here. In fact, you can hear them. They hammer away, yeah. We get a, a, a flock of cedar waxwings that come here in the summer, and they'll be here for about four hours. They eat all the berries off of one bush and they're gone. I always wonder how they know about that one bush. They arrive in a flock, clean it, and then they go. And they're a lovely bird to watch, they really are. I like to paint them because they're very outstanding with that, that black mask over their eye, you know. Hi, Hugh. Hi, Maggie, nice Hi, to see nice you. Hi, nice to see you. This is uh, my little gallery. I have a lot of work scattered around, but <laughs> some here. This is an, uh, a fish owl. Beautiful bird. This is uh, obviously not full size, but close to it. Mm -hmm. How long did something like this take you to create? Oh, this is about two weeks. It's done in sections, as you can see. Then it's reinforced with wood, whatever's necessary. And all of these are separate pieces, the uh, feathers. And uh, this is what you end up with. And it's very, very archival. It's heavily varnished. I've had these pieces out now for 25 years or so. This is actually my studio. It's pretty cramped, but it works for me. The first process, obviously, would be to boil the paper, cut the birds, uh, reinforce the backings. By then, I've dried them. I bring them over here, and I would paint them. And uh, at that point, they're uh, coated with varnish to make them, you know, archival. And uh, it's not a fussy process, it just takes a little time. Hugh, thank you so much for bringing us into your gallery. And while we've been here, aaron has been over at the Widow's Walk, checking out the big historical renovation going on there. One of our primary goals here is to help women feel worthy of having such a positive experience shopping for lingerie, sleepwear, swimwear, whatever it may be. There is a common misconception with what it is that we do here, specifically with the word lingerie, which is by definition just women's undergarments and night clothes. And certainly the definition of lingerie has evolved over time and that's fine, but we exist to serve all women's undergarment needs, whether that be the everyday basics to their sleepwear, to their loungewear, and all of the playful stuff in between. It's time to get moving. Shake it up. This month, upgrade to a new 2021 Honda CRV. New vibe, new attitude. Discover new possibilities with a Honda and upgrade to a new CRV. Stop by your local Honda dealer or visit mainhondadealers.com. Even if the volume is off, we get your message across. Media Northeast is Maine's premier video production company with one goal growing your company through compelling commercials, engaging social media. More. Our creative team works to reflect the hard work and dedication you put into your business. We live in a visual world. 
Let us help you captivate your audience. Hi, I'm Rob Barrett of Barrett Made. I'm excited to announce our new sister company, KCMF. And what KCMF is and will allow us to do is expand our offerings to our clients for kitchens, closets, millwork, and furniture. It's something we've done in the past um, where we had a smaller shop and a lot of our custom work needed to have custom millwork as well. And we were finding ourselves very constrained by that shop. And so an opportunity came up where we can do this and offer it on all our projects now and for other clients as well. So we offer that and we also have our own uh, lines of furniture. I'm Skylar Welch from Main Point Lending and I'm here to tell you a little bit about purchasing a home. So, so many people think that you have to put 20% down to purchase a home when actually there are so many other loan options. Did you know you can purchase a home for as little as no money down? We also have conventional products with three and 5% down payments. Another great option that people may not know is that 100% of these funds for your down payment can be gifted to you from a family member. So if you're thinking about purchasing a home, please reach out and I can help you through the process. I've been in this area since 1981. I have three children and three grandchildren, all of whom were born in Maine. I'm a proud adopter of the state of Maine. And one of the things that I often tell buyers who are interested to know what it's like to live here is that this is a part of the world where so many people come from somewhere else to begin with. We've all had the opportunity to be new. We've all had to make our own community where we landed. It's all about the individual and you're, you're judged on the content of your character. People find that very comforting. Jen, my wife, and I had taken a couple days for Valentine's Day in Rangeley and we had spent all weekend planning our wedding. So we pulled up to the corner and as we took the corner, she just said, how about we buy the house instead of getting married? She says, it looks like it's under foreclosure and I think we should do this. We came in down the next weekend and the whole family we met here, walked through it. We left very, very scared. Uh, my Uncle Kurt talked us down off the ledge and said, you can do this and we're here to help. And we purchased it three, a little over three years ago. The crazy part is, is the called my grandfather to tell him that we were buying it, and then that's when he told me the fact that my great-grandfather had owned it. He sent me pictures of him and my grandmother getting married in the front windows inside. And this was where my mother, when she left the hospital, this is where she lived first. And I didn't know any of that before we bid on it. A lot of people call it Widow's Walk now, but it'll be Piglow's Alpine Lodge again. We wanted to have a place up here. We didn't dream it'd be something like this. But uh, with two boys, Jackson and Barrett, um, I wanted to make sure that they got to see what life is like up here. There's just so much to say about growing up in a small town and being in a small town and having people know who you are and know what you're about. It's, it's pretty nice. We're now introducing you to Uncle Kurt. You are uh, Brian's uncle. So when he picked up the phone and said, Uncle Kurt, I think I'm buying this property. What, what was your reaction? Brian, if you didn't, I was gonna. Oh, uh, cool. <laughs> so you knew it was kind of in disrepair and needed some love? Yeah, and I, but we didn't know it was for sale. Uh. Brian, uh, just out of the blue, says, hey, uh, check on this place. And uh, my wife, Shannon, which is a realtor, uh, looked it up online and uh, saw that it was being foreclosed on. Yeah, Brian dove right in head first. And here we are. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> Before we go inside and check it out, anything notable you want us to look out for when we're in there? Uh, the rats are kind of small. Oh so you my have gosh. To... <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Kurt. <laughs> All right, let's go in. <laughs> so this was a cool note that was posted on my door and it's from the, so Hobson's were the one that owned it and turned it into the Widow's Walk, is what they called it. This was their daughter. She just showed up and wanted to thank me for trying to bring her home back. Oh, wow. This is the old carriage house and just the way it was all set up. 
Well, okay, everyone. <laughs> this is proof what it can look like. Easy. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we walking up to here? This is the second floor. These are the bedrooms and bathroom will be up here. Got this gutted all the way to studs. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to go with the uh, original wallpaper like yeah, look at that, that flower huh? print. Fancy. You know? It's some nice stuff, but uh, <gasps> they even had it on the ceilings here. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever, you know. Yeah. Everyone has their own taste. Exactly. This is the ladder that they used to use to get up to the Widow's Walk. That's how the place got its, you know, most recent name. Why do I think the house is important? Yes. Uh, it's important for me. Uh, Stratton was such a great town to grow up in. I know all small towns are supposed to be super tight, but Stratton is very, very special. Um. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm an emotional guy. Yes, that's why we're dealing with all this and putting money into it and trying to make it better. It's because the town deserves it. 100%. A lot of times in life, people in town have cared for me and done good for me, so I'd like to return it. Hi there, I'm Adam Parent. I've been selling real estate for eight years. I've been honored to help over 350 families buy and sell real estate here in Maine. It's been amazing, the experience of being an owner um, and really setting the scene for the real estate future here in Maine. I love meeting people, whether it's first time home buyer or seller, seeing that satisfaction of them getting the keys for the first time or selling it and taking advantage of a seller's market and getting some great equity out of the property, like that's rewarding. And getting a thank you at the end of the day is just what I love. Welcome Aaron and Maggie to Teapon Lodge and Cabins. We're located three miles in off Tar. The dirt road that you came in today is a whole lot better than it was seven years ago when we bought the property. It was a mud hole then and a Jeep trail, but it was our vision to open in April. Probably not the smartest idea. <laughs> Here in the main lodge, we have three rooms upstairs with one shared bath. We have a full restaurant and bar. We're situated on 42 acres of land that we actually own, and then we're surrounded by hundreds of acres of forestry land. So KR Builders, also known as Uncle Kurt to you, fortunately for us, we were able to get him and his crew on board. The building in general is amazing. The craftsmanship by his his team to bring it to where it is today is amazing. A lot of it's Sandy's vision that they put in place up here above the bar. They gave us an amazing thing that they built for me and Sandy. We didn't ask for it, they, they built it for us. Their little signature. So you are kind of the reason, right, that this is happening and it happened so fast? Uh, I guess we're kind of responsible for it, yeah. <laughs> yeah responsible say that. for this beauty? <laughs> yeah, it, but it's, it, again, it's Sandy's vision and Craig's vision, and that's what we do is make visions reality. You know, I remember Sandy coming in one time, and she just starts crying, and there's seven or eight of us standing here, and Sandy just starts bawling. Next thing you know, we're all crying. <laughs> and, and ultimate goal is to make the client happy, yeah. you know, with what, what we do and, and to make their vision a reality and um, that's the ultimate goal, I guess, is to do that. Is Ivy happy? Is Lady Ivy happy here? <laughs> yeah, Tucker Tucker was a lot happier. He, he was involved in the project a lot more than Ivy was <laughs> when we were here. Tucker, he was... Your best foreman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Uncle Kurt. Let's go have a drink. That's awesome. You have a seat at the bar with your name on carved in it? I think I do. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> thank you everybody for watching this episode of Places and Spaces and thank you to all of our new friends in Stratton and Eustis. I can't wait to come back. <laughs> and we hope you've seen something that inspires you to take a drive on up here for yourself and see what's going on. If you have an idea for a place or space you'd like to be featured, you can email us at info at mainlifemedia.com and follow us on Places and Spaces Maine on Instagram to see what we're up to. And to all of you that call Maine home for a weekend or forever, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Cheers! Yay! Woo! <laughs>